coming up from the ninth and final Masters of the FIBA 3X3 World Tour season in Penang, the historic first visit to Malaysia. We sit down with Princeton Dynamo Kareem Maddox, who's enjoying playing for the namesake of his beloved college. Hieronimo Vandalis is the intimidating man in the middle for The Hague, but the gentle giant is inspiring kids back home in the Netherlands. And we talk to Filipino high flyer David Carlos, who's a Duncan trailblazer in his basketball crazy homeland. Plus, stay tuned to the end of the magazine for a very American top five plays of the tournament. It's quick, it's epic, and now it's Olympic. Welcome to the world of FIBA 3x3 basketball, a game played with nonstop music on a half court with two teams of three players aiming to hit the magical 21 point mark in 10 minutes of game time. Previously at the FIBA 3x3 World Tour, Lima and Tesla Voda won their second Masters of the season with a victory over Riga Ghetto in the Chengdu Masters. The Serbs will look to continue their hot streak in Penang, but face a bunch of desperate teams looking to book a ticket to the Bloomers Beijing final with just two spots still up for grabs. Which teams make the final cut for Beijing? Let's find out. Delhi 3BL had China on their mind and meant business against Melbourne Eye Athletic. Bikram Jeet Gill, aka the Bearded King, and Kiran Shastri provided the one-two punch as Delhi skipped out to a 7-2 lead. The Australians came back, but with the game on the line, Shastri was the man to cash in to give Delhi a 19-14 victory. The Bearded King was stronger than absinthe against Zamoon to continue Delhi's impressive day one. Sharon was caring for the Indians and Shastri continued to drop bomb from deep as his team enjoyed an 11-7 lead. But last year's World Tour champs weren't done yet as a two-handed boom went down from Nikola Vukovic igniting Zamoon. In the clutch though, the Bearded King regained his crown and Delhi prevailed 21-19 in a day one classic. On day one, New York Harlem 3-Ball USA had more plays than Despacito on YouTube. Against number two seeds Piran, Marcel Esimune was having none of it at the rack, and neither was Dave Seegers, aka Super Dave. But the Americans weren't as spectacular on O as they fought to Piran 21-17. It was do or die for New York Harlem and The Hague with both teams desperate to keep their tournaments alive. It was a dunk off with Esimune throwing down the lob, but Vanderlis answering emphatically. It was time for Dominique Jones, AKA Disco Damo, to do the Harlem Shake, and he put Casper Averink in spin cycle. Disco Damo saved his best move for last to lead New York Harlem to a tough 21-19 victory. Number four seeds Princeton had plenty of highlights against Dung Quan MC. Zaire Carrington had the lucky bounce and showed off the D, swiping shots like a Tinder profile. Meantime, Kareem Maddox threw the hammer down harder than Thor as Princeton won big 22-12 and then beat Ralia Intergalactic to top pool D. Top seeds Lima Tesla Voda are already Beijing bound, having won two Masters this season but they didn't come to the Pearl of the Orient for no holiday. The Serbs flexed their muscle with a mighty 22-10 beatdown of Tachikawa with Mihajlo Vasic and Stefan Stojic, aka Mr. Robot, combining for 20 points. It was much of the same against Kron with Mr. Robot driving to the rim for the pretty finish as the Serbs jumped out to a six point lead. Lehman toyed with their opponents like Eminem with Machine Gun Kelly, and Mr. Robot dropped a dime to Alexander Ratko for the exclamation point. Lehman win easily 22 14 and continue to be the team to beat. The top six seeds are through to the quarterfinals, along with Kron and New York Harlem. Meantime, it's the end of the line for Tachikawa, The Hague, Melbourne Eye Athletic, and Dong Kwan MC. Kareem Maddox, aka Reem, provides the cream for Princeton. 
the namesake of the famous college he once played for, where he ranks fourth all time in block shots. We went from the worst team in school history to the best team in school history in our four years. And everything that happened in between, we had to grow, we had to fight, you know, speaking about Dan, Dan and I, but our whole team and the, all the coaches from that program, I think that was really life-changing. Having to go from being absolutely awful and take it amongst ourselves to get better, to become, you know, the best and have one of the best records in school history is like a growing experience that I'm not sure if you can really replicate in any other way. There were ups and downs at Princeton, but he learned important life lessons there alongside current teammate Dan Mavradis. Turning around when you're so used to losing um, for a whole season is something that you have to do together. There's no really one individual that can really do that. But Dan is someone who is uh, you know, extremely vocal and extremely competitive. It was definitely at the forefront of that, you know, as I tried to be. And being able to think back to the lessons that we learned um, in Princeton, is, you know, the same principles apply. You have to fight, you have to work with your teammates, win or lose together uh, no matter what. And I think that having the team Princeton name on these jerseys uh, is a great reminder of all those things. Touring the world and playing 3x3 with Mob Radies has been a dream come true for Ree. <laughs> no matter what he does or how Dan he can be, you're never going to find like a better friend or a better teammate to play with and share experiences like, you know, playing all over the world for three on three basketball together on these crazy, you know, weekend trips. Of course, with Craig Z, Damon and Robbie as well. It's a, it's a dream come true. In his first year on the world tour, Reem has provided plenty of meme worthy highlights, but admits he's still learning 3x3 ball. It's the most physical <laughs> form of basketball that I've ever played. The way that the three-on-three -three game is, and I would say also the competition of, of guys who've been playing this for a lot longer than we have on the international stage, has forced us to learn quickly and I think play the way that FIBA three-on-three is played. I'm still learning. I don't know what the, <laughs> the ultimate form of my game will be, but it's going to be some combination of driving and shooting, you know. All right, here's a look at the quarterfinal bracket, highlighted by a Serbian showdown and an All-American battle royale. First up, can last year's World Tour champ Zamboon defeat red-hot Lehman Tesla Voda in the Serbian showdown? The number three seed needed to start fast, but it was Lehman with the first punch as Stefan Stojicic, aka Mr. Robot, connected from deep. Everything was going right for Lehman, with Stefan Koyic getting the shooter's touch and they jumped out to a 9-2 lead. Zamoun found some life when Bogdan Dragovic hit the two-piece to reduce Lehman's lead to three, but there would be no dramatic finish to this one. Mr. Robot showed off the hezzy and Lehman's hustle overcame cold shooting to win it 16-9. Zamoun bowed out, but they still qualified for the Bloomers Beijing final. We knew that it will be very physical and tough. We did what we wanted to do, play with a lot of movement, and we managed to win. American pride was on the line when New York Harlem three ball USA and Princeton went to battle. Princeton had the size advantage, and Zaire Carrington went to work above the rim. But Marcel Essenwune was having a block party on Kareem Maddox, AKA Reem, and New York Harlem was filling it on O through Disco Damo's dancing shoe. New York Harlem led 17 to 12 when Disco Damo hit one deeper than the Kendrick Lamar line. But Princeton answered when Reem rose up. It wasn't enough though, as Disco Damo had the last word to lead New York Harlem to a 21-16 victory before the time limit. I don't care if you won, two, 17, 99. We're gonna play the same way. We're gonna come out and fight every game. Number two seeds Piran were favored against Ralia Intergalactic, but the Serbs made the early run with Naboy Sakilian killing up. Piran were in deep trouble, trailing 10 to 5, but pretty passing and hot shooting from Adin Kavgic sparked a 10 to 2 run. Here's a tip for you youngsters out there, by the way. Simon Fitzgar can still break your ankles. And Piran's sick dimes found holes in the D. The Serbs had one last chance to send it to overtime, but Kilian missed it. Piran moving on to the semis with an impressive 18 to 16 victory. What makes your team so special? <laughs> 
What makes your team so special that you can come from five points behind to come back and win? You just saw it, chemistry. Delhi 3BL sizzled on day one, and Bikram Jit Gill, aka the Bearded King, aimed to continue the momentum against Crime with an early rim shaker. Tomo Chayich responded with a pair of two pieces as the Slovenian skipped out to a 12 to 6 lead. The Delhi, oh, they weren't done yet, rattling off six straight points to tie it at 12 apiece. With the game up for grabs, Chayich splashed one from deep, and then he floated like a butterfly as Kron closed in on victory. They withheld one last Delhi run with the Bearded King unable to tie the game with 15 seconds left. Kron took it out, and they were into the final four. This year, we struggle a little bit. We have uh, injury problems, but anyway, we keep grinding, so we're still here. The shootout contest. The moment we crowned the best sniper in the whole tournament. The final sees four players hit 15 shots worth one point from three destinations around the arc and three money balls worth two points from the 3x3 logo. And to spice things up a bit, 5,000 USD are on the table for whoever beats the all-time record of 15 points and 10 grand for whoever goes blackjack and hits all 21 points. It might have been hot and humid in P-Name, but the shootout was ice cold. Except for Dominique Jones, AKA Disco Damo, who's been one of the stars at the P-Name Masters. He needs to change his nickname, by the way, to Disco Dominator, as the New York Harlem Three Ball USA star easily won the shootout contest. He nailed six straight shots and 10 of his first 13 to sweep the field. Disco Damo, your shootout winner of the P-Name Masters contest. Geronimo van der List is the big fella in the middle for The Hague, who comes from the iconic Netherlands city of Gouda, well known for its tasty cheese. I actually worked in the cheese factory when I was 15 years old. Uh, that was really tough working because you start in the morning, five o'clock in the morning until four o'clock in the afternoon, so it's really hard work. But uh, yeah, I, I can actually tell wherever I lived that I was from Gouda because everybody knew the, the Gouda cheese. So. Having played basketball all over the world, Vanderlist was attracted to 3x3 in hopes the exciting game makes the sport more popular in his soccer mad country. I actually saw the, the European Championship in Amsterdam. That was a really good experience because uh, a lot of people that come from outside that don't have anything to do with basketball, they were interested and that's also a very good thing for basketball, uh, first of all, because basketball is not as popular in Holland. Soccer is very big, you know, and that's when I saw the three on three. I wasn't really ready, ready for it because I was still busy with the five on five. And then this summer they uh, assembled uh, Team The Hague and Team Amsterdam uh, together. They, they changed Team Amsterdam a little bit. We started practicing together and it was a good experience and we got to go on all these, these trips, so that was really, really nice. Practicing with compatriots Amsterdam Enox deals has helped The Hague be more competitive in the World Tour debut season. The advantage of us that we have, because we practice against Team Amsterdam every day, is that they play also very physical and it learns us to deal with it. They screen really good, they have a really good pick and roll. Almost as tall as the Patronus Towers, Vanderlis has an intimidating presence on the court, but is a gentle giant off of it. He runs a camp for underprivileged kids during the summer. I'm actually uh, having a camp with two of my older teammates. It's a camp for kids in Holland. It's just so cool to work with 100 kids and teach them something that I do twice a day, you know? So uh, it's not only basketball because we're trying to teach them also the way uh, when you eat together, involve everybody, no bullying and stuff like that, because it happens everywhere, you know, so. We added the 3x3 part in our, in our camp. I think it was a good addition to the camp. It's a very uh, a new way of playing basketball and I, the kids really liked it. New York Harlem Three Ball USA aimed for another upset when they played number one seed Lehman Tesla Voda, while number two seeds Piran faced fellow Slovenians Kran. 
In the first semifinal, Lehman had the size advantage and went to work inside for easy buckets. Alexander Radkov had the and one, and Mihailo Vazic straight bullied inside as Lehman opened up an early three-point lead. It was only a matter of time, though, before Disco Damo got it going, and his stroke was wet to get New York Harlem back in the game. Stefan Stojicic, a.k.a. Mr. Robot, had found it tough in Pine but he finally found his Wi-Fi range, as Lehman had the answers like a cheat sheet. The Serbs went back inside, and Vasic finished New York Harlem off to wrap up Lehman's 21-16 win. They make another Masters final, but it's disappointment for New York Harlem, as the USA's two-year world tour drought continues. We really want this title because after this title, we are going to first, for the first time in our history of the club to become top-ranked team in the world. Veteran Slovenian teams Piran and Kran continue to defy father time, but which one will tap into the fountain of youth in the semifinal? It was 32-year-old Mensu Julevic who had the hops and got the crowd going nuts. Piran went inside meantime with Adin Kavgic and Anze Srebo getting their hands dirty early. After years of playing together, Piran had more chemistry than Walter White. The slick passing led to easy buckets, and Piran's place in the final was booked when Shrey both roared like Russell Crowe and Gladiator. Piran take it 17 to 12, and once again prove their ages like Vince Carter. It's Kron out, and Delhi 3BL in for the World Tour final race. You never know with uh, us playing, because we know each other so well. So each game is like a very tough game, low scoring game, but again, uh, today we won. It's time for rims to rattle, and this one's gonna be nastier than Toe Jam. Two time FIBA 3x3 dunk world champ Dimitri Smooth Kravenko was the favorite, but David Carlos, a.k.a. Air David from the Philippines and Poland's Arkadius Przybylski, a.k.a. Eric, were ready to bring it. There was no messing around with the trio bringing a A game in the semifinals. Eric was unlucky to be eliminated, but still produced a spectacular reverse flush over three brave volunteers. It left Air David trying to take down the dunk king in the final. The Filipino makes up for his lack of height with insane hops as he showed in the final with a reverse power jam over two people. He saved his best dunk for last with a one-handed throwdown with authority over three dudes. But Smooth didn't sweat one beat. He pulled off one of the sickest dunks imaginable, a flip behind the back, then somehow between the legs before a one-handed flush to earn perfect tens. This dude got a creative arts dunking degree. Nobody does it like that. The battle off for the ages was complete when Smooth pulled off his signature wind dunk, sending the ball through his legs along the baseline, perfect timing to prove he's still one of the best dunkers in the business. So it's Dimitri Smooth Kravinko winning the dunk title and taking home the $2,500 check. So you like what you saw from David Carlos in the dunk contest, huh? Well, here's more. In Hoops Crazy Philippines, Air David has become a sensation as the country's dunking pioneer. He started learning the art of dunking way back in high school. Well, I started off um, back in high school. I was looking at videos and YouTube, like I saw dunkers. Back then, I was really fascinated about dunks. I'm not, I'm not really into dunking dunking, if you know what I mean. But fast forward 2016 is where I learned that it's possible to be a pro dunker. At his first World Tour event in Chengdu last year, Carlos stunned dunk king Rafal Lepek Lipinski to take out the contest. Chengdu was crazy because it was my first FIBA event. I went up against Lipek. Man, like Lipek is a different animal. My plan was to make all my dunks regardless, so that's it. I beat him, but not really beat him, beat him, you know, you know what I mean? Like, he slipped, he made a mistake, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about winning. So, but yeah, I'm really happy about that. 
Carlos became a celebrity in his homeland after winning bronze at the FIBA 3x3 World Cup dunk contest in the Philippines. After World Cup, I was a instant celebrity. All networks guesting here, guesting there, you know, talk show to talk show. Filipinos were happy because at first they didn't really know that dunking is a sport, done. but after that, they gave me uh, a lot of recognition, uh, sponsors and everything, so yeah, I'm really happy. At 5'9", Carlos might look like Kevin Hart on the court, but he's proved height is not a factor when it comes to throwing it down with authority. I didn't really think about me being short for, for dunking. It's important for a dunker to have you know, a big heart taller than you, so I did a lot of trial and errors. So right now, I think I'm in the point that I know all the workout that works for me and doesn't work for me. I try to stick with them. Like other athletes, I take care of myself. I spend my own money on with, for, you know, for my body. You know, I go to regular you know, PT sessions. It's hard to imagine Carlos not soaring towards the hoop, but Duncan will never be far from his thoughts no matter what he does in life. If I wasn't the Duncan, I would be a math teacher. Geometry, you know, it helped a lot because doing the self alley oops, where to bounce the ball, where the certain height goes, measurement when you jump, where you do your penultimate step, you know, stuff like those. With a rare ability to walk on air, Carlos hopes more Filipinos will follow his footsteps. I'd say to all the Filipino aspiring dunkers, keep on pushing, that's it. Because what I did, I never, I never stopped. I just kept on pushing, pushing, pushing some more. Number one seeds Lehman and Tesla Vota were aiming for their third Masters of the season, but the experienced Piran came out fighting. Adin Kavigic was firing bullets and Piran's pretty passing kept it close. But it was time for Mr. Robot to crack the code after rare shooting struggles. Mr. Robot stroked the pretty mid-range J, then dropped a two-piece as Lehman opened up a five-point lead. Mr. Robot had the cheat code as he splashed one all net and the game was nearly over with. Simon Finsgaard tried to spark his team back to life, but Mr. Robot finished things off from the Sport Court logo to deliver Lehman a 21-15 victory and their third Masters of the season. Mr. Robot had a game-high 13 points to claim MVP, his second in a row after winning in Chengdu. Lehman finished as the number one team in the World Tour standings, Piran missed out on their first Masters of the season, but they'll still be playing at the Bloomage Beijing final. Now we got that position to be the first seed and the first team in the world by ranking points before the final tournament. And it's also a big motivation for us to try to hold that first place because to be first in something in the world, it's really hard. And that's what we're dreaming about. It's what you've all been waiting for. The sublime, the ridiculous, it's all there. The top five plays of the P-Nang Masters. We start things off with Minsu Yulovich doing a little shaking and a little baking before the one-handed flush session. And then he hit him with the exclamation at the end of the drive. I didn't know he could still do that. At number four, Kareem Maddox, AKA Reem, almost rips off the rim with a monster J. It's that man again. The cream show rises to the top when Reem go to work. Maddox, it ain't sugar, it ain't milk. It's Kareem rising to the top. At number two, here goes Disco Damo doing more spinning than Spider-Man. Spinning! Saucin', saucin' on you. Oh, the magician doing his thing and puts Harlem up by one. At number one, pick your poison. The pretty lob from Disco Damo or Marcel Essenwune's vicious throwdown. 
Oop, there it is. They must call him Mr. Satay because that was peanuts. Oh, I like Let's... it. Come on, Kareem. Oh, so Essen Wool going up top with some authority. It's what we've all been waiting for. The 3X3 World Tour Bloomage Beijing Final will take place in the Chinese capital on October 27th and 28th. The top 12 teams on the World Tour standings will be competing for the ultimate prize, headed by Serbian powerhouses Lima Teslavoda and Novi Sad Alwada. Ljubljana, the only other team to win the Masters, Riga Ghetto, Piran, Amsterdam Enox Deals, Zamun, Princeton, Upalets Bernard, Saskatoon, Gargarin, and Delhi 3BL will also be dreaming of glory in Beijing. Remember, you can follow it live with the hashtag 3x3WT on FIBA 3x3 social media channels on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.